fundamentalists or born again Christians that seems to fake it till they can fake it. In other words, they pretend like they know what to do and then they throw their faith at it expecting God to come through. So they fake it till they can faith it. In other words, they're trying to manipulate whether they'll admit it or not, God. You see, it doesn't start off that way, per se, but since God's grace and mercy is extended, sometimes people don't know what to do. They say they do, they act like they do, but a lot of times they'll wing it in order to fling it. Because what they do is they kind of wing it, you know, just go, well, yeah, it, it seems like the right thing to do, you know. So we'll just wing it until we can fling it on the Lord, you know, and say it was God's will. You know, but in the meantime, we're just going to wing it and pretend like, oh, well, of course, this is the right thing to do, you know, because, you know, it's, it's right, you know. It looks like, it smells like, it tastes like the right thing. But is it God's will? You see, Jesus being crucified looks like the absolute wrong thing to do. Even Peter told Jesus, hey, you ain't going to get crucified. Absolutely not. We'll make you king, but we ain't going to let you die. No way, sucker. We're going to stop them from doing it. And he even tried to with the sword. But Jesus said, no, this is the reason I came. I'm here to do not my will, but the will of my Father. I'm here to do what God sent me to do. And that's the point that you have to come to a conclusion in your faith or fake it life is that if you have faith in God, if you have faith with God, if you have the faith of our fathers, then you trust God to do and to perform the results He wants to accomplish, not the results you want to accomplish. You see, there are people that get involved in politics and they want absolutely to force you into making a decision. Well, hurry up, you have to decide. That's a common practice to make people snap decisions. Oh. Pray about it, of course, but you know, you really should be picking the biblical answer because, after all, it's obvious who we should vote for. No, it's not. It's never been obvious. It's never been a biblical answer about voting or not voting or picking or choosing. The biblical answers are always about Jesus and what he said to do. You see, if you open a Bible, it's all about Jesus. If it's not, you're in the wrong Bible. I don't know what you're reading, but the Bible, according to Jesus, said, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are which testify of me. The scriptures, all of them, from volume to volume, from scroll to scroll, from Genesis to the book of Revelation at the very end. All of it testifies of Jesus. You may not be as scholarly as maybe I am, but every page, you pull out a page and I'll tell you about Jesus on it. Quite frankly, pretty bluntly, obviously. But the point is, is that though you may not comprehend it at first, you'll find that any time people want to avoid God in control, they put man in control. So they faith it by way of faking it. And that's what's happening right now in the world today, is that a lot of Christians, because they're, oh, well, it looks like success. It feels like success. There's a lot of people involved in it. It seems like the right thing to do. I mean, it is about we the people, isn't it? No, it's not. It's about you alone with God. Yeah, really. Everything in your life that comes your way, whether good, whether bad, whether up, whether down, whether all around, all of it brings you to a personal relationship of making a decision based upon if you have a personal relationship or you don't. Can you ask God for everything you do? Can you ask God for wisdom in everything you do? Or do you think that somehow God just says, you know, well, you know, you go learn and, you know, I'll, I'll check up on you. I'll give you a report card when you get done. Because that's what a lot of Christians do. They wing it and then fling it on the Lord. You see, winging it is saying, well, hey, you know, God gave you the Spirit of God. God gave you the Bible. God gave you the church. God gave you all these people you know you can check with. But... You know, you got to wing it. You know, you're on your own. You got to exercise your faith. You know, you got to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You know, and then God's going to grade you on the curve. You know, unless you get into heaven, but He's going to, of course, you know, judge all your works. So you know, you'll kind of make it, but you'll still have to bake it to see if it's good works or bad. See, you make it, 
but you gotta make it. I don't know where these people are getting this from, but somebody's gonna make it. I mean, make it? They make it? Come on, Susie Crocker? Or wing it and fling it on the Lord? Oh, give me a break. You know, or fake it? To faith it? Oh, man, isn't there a better way? Jesus said yes. There is a better way. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. I see right now in Christianity people wanting to influence other people to get what they want rather than to give them the tools to do what God wants them to do, which is what I'm telling you to do. I'm saying, don't do what I do. Good God, no, I hope not. But do what God tells you to do. Because you see, I don't have your personal relationship. Thank God. You don't have my personal relationship. You better thank God. <laughs> but I do have a personal relationship with Jesus that's mine and mine alone. It is imbued by, enabled by, caused to come to pass by the Spirit of God in me that causes me to dwell in Him so that He would cause me to hear His voice that I would walk according to His way so He could show me the Word every day to do according to what He says for me to do. That is who is in control of my vote, my life, my choices, my relationship, my personal decision-making process. The Spirit of God. As many as are called and are led by the Spirit of God, to them they are the sons of God. So, you are a son of God if you be led by the Spirit of God. But, are you faith in it to fake it? I mean, you're faking it to faith it? I mean, come on. What, what reality check is there that at the end of it when you fake it to begin with, you start off faking it and then you want to kind of like play it by ear until you know, you know, that you hear something from God. No. Why didn't you just ask God? Do you want me to do it or not? Yes or no? And God says, no, you say, okay. And you don't do it. You don't manipulate. You don't grate against the bit. You know, rah, 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 I really want to do it. God might let you do it, and it won't be his will. So, the bottom line is, be careful who you follow. Because if you're following people and making decisions based upon popular opinion or unpopular opinion or anybody's opinion except for God's, you're being deceived, whether by yourself or by the people or by a pastor, or by an elder, or by the spirit, or whatever. The point is, you're being deceived. The truth has always been the same, which has been from the beginning. God has given us his word. Thy word is truth. And his word declares to us, I don't want to do my will. I want to do your will, Father. So if you're obedient to someone, you can say you were obedient to God. But I thought I knew what I was doing. Pardon me, but that's faking it in order to fake it. You may have thought you knew what you're doing, but did you ask? You see, God says, hey, I'm not into this faith thing. I don't care about your faith movement. I don't care about your faith beliefs. I don't care about any of your beliefs. I care if you've done the things I said. If you didn't, hey, you're dead. But if you did, you're alive. Otherwise, why didn't you ask? Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock, door shall be open. But, but, but I tried to ask. Did you really? Seriously. God said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who abradeth not, but giveth to all men liberally. Is God a liar? Is he? You have to decide that. If he's a liar, then quit following Jesus and don't be a Christian. Go follow and serve, you know, Mormons or who knows what, Jehovah's Witnesses or, you know, Gunga Din or China Blue or, you know, Television 2. You can make something up. I mean, Mormons did. But you can choose to obey but don't try to play at being a Christian. A Christian according to Spurgeon is someone who is led by the Spirit of God. You see Spurgeon knew that he had lots of men of God all around him. They were all coming to him to learn from the master, learn from the, the chief architect of Christianity at the time, the faith person who's going to teach us the way we should run our ministry. 
what we should do when we are put in that position of the pulpit in order to follow God. And so Spurgeon told them in no uncertain terms what to do. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. Psalms <laughs> something 16. <laughs> wow, I forgot what a C is. CID. <laughs> something 14. Or, yes, 14. Or 4. Without sap, the tree cannot flourish or even exist. Vitality is essential to a Christian. There must be life. A vital principle infused into us by God, the Holy Ghost, or we cannot be trees of the Lord. The mere name of being a Christian is but a dead thing. We must be filled with the spirit of divine life. This life is mysterious. We do not understand the circulation of the sap, by what force it rises and by what power it descends again. So the life within us is a sacred mystery. Regeneration is wrought by the Holy Spirit, entering into man and becoming man's life, not his own. And this divine life in a believer afterward feeds upon the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ and is thus sustained by divine food. And from whence it cometh and whither it goeth, who shall explain that to us? What a secret thing the sap is. The roots go searching through the soil with their little spungules, but we cannot see them suck out of the various gases or transmute the mineral into the vegetable. This work is done down in the dark. Our root is Christ Jesus and our life is hid in him. This is the secret of the Lord. The radix of the Christian life is as secret as the life itself. How permanently active is the sap in the cedar? In the Christian, the divine life is always full of energy, not always in fruit bearing, but in inward operations. The believer's graces are not everyone to palpitate within. Oh, the believer's graces are not every one of them in constant motion, but his life never ceases to palpitate within. He is not always working for God, but his heart is always living upon him. As the sap manifests itself in producing the foliage and fruit of the tree, so with a truly healthy Christian, his grace is externally manifested in his walk and conversation. If you talk with him, he cannot help speaking about Jesus. If you notice his actions, you will see that he has been with Jesus. He has so much sap within him that it must be and must fill his conduct and conversation with life because he cannot stop but talk about Jesus. Whenever I hear of politics and politicians and people telling me what to do, I want to hear what they say about Jesus. Because the one thing they will not do, whenever they tell me, faith it, fake it, wing it, fling it, or to shake and bake it, you know, but to uh, make it, then bake it, is they don't tell me what Jesus said. Because Jesus was no uncertain terms, bluntly challenging his religious leaders of his day by telling them, look, you say you follow the Father, but if you did, you would accept me and follow what I am doing. Even if just for the works themselves you would follow me. But you don't. You don't do what I say, and you don't hear what I say. So you will be cast away far from me. The reality of hearing Jesus is what our relationship is all about. The reality of knowing Jesus is what our eternal life is going to become. The reality of being a Christian is the fact that we have been with God and God is in us and God is with us and God works through us. So doing something outside of the will of God should be as foreign to you as going about voting without asking him who to vote for, going about waking up in the morning without asking him what he wants you to do today, going about putting on your pants without talking to God first and committing your way unto him. That should be the very first thing that comes out of your breath in the morning. Because if a Jew in the morning, when they open their eyelids, and the Orthodox do, can offer up a prayer for that, 
and a blessing, then how much more so we who know Jesus ought to be committed to the life that is within, that is the very sap of the being of the existence that we are as trees of righteousness unto him. For if we aren't, then I hate to say it, but your faith is faking it. Because you're faking it until you can faith it. But once you do quit winging it and flinging it on the Lord, and you begin to walk in obedience, you'll find it's simple as a child, easy as a babe, as smart as the wisest man in the world who says, hey, the Lord said, wait, I'll wait. I'll sit here until the cows come home. When the cows come home, I'll milk them. But if he doesn't tell me to milk them, I'm not doing it. Those are the ways that God moves in our lives. Because except the Lord build a house, the workmen laboreth in vain. And so a lot of what people do nowadays is really spiritual gyrations rather than being obviously an observation of being in the presence of God and having him tell the person what to do, where to go, what to say, and even how to vote. Don't get caught up in the world, even if it's a Christian using the world's ways, which they do. Most Christians will use some type of motivational speaker attitude towards you. Or use some gimmick like a fallacy, a straw man argument, some kind of motivational inspiration, but not the Spirit of God within you. Because I can commit your care into his keeping and trust it to be there, then have to worry about trying to manipulate you into believing something you don't, or doing something you won't, or asking you to be something you aren't. Because I know that whatsoever you do as unto the Lord will be rewarded and whatever isn't will be consumed. And God will bless you for that which you've sown, and that which you reap will be your own rewards for what you've done in flesh. So, walking in the Spirit and being led by the Spirit, you can tell who is very easily. How? <laughs> I think Spurgeon just said it, because they'll talk about Jesus.